Praise the name of the Lord. We are so glad again that you could have joined us here today. And I welcome all of you who are with us on Facebook, those of you on YouTube, and all our friends and family on Zoom. I'm seeing a number of you are with us. Welcome. I'm seeing Jocelyn. You're there with us from Florida. Hello. Good to see you. Pat in New York. God bless you. Great to have you here with us uh, in Toronto. You're there. I'm seeing you and all of you. Wow. A whole lot of people in Coover. Welcome to Jesus Life Center again. Bless God. Don't forget, go on Facebook and like our page book. Give us a like and follow us on Facebook. So as you watch, give a like. At this time, share with your friends wherever you are, and we welcome you for being here. If you've been following us for the last few weeks, you would know that this month is Spiritual Family Month at JLC. Last month, we celebrated the physical family. And this month, we are celebrating the spiritual family. The last time we dealt with generational blessings, and we looked at that issue of families, of blessings passing down, and then we focused on the elderly, and we celebrated our elderly. Today, we are continuing to focus on the family. And our theme today is building and protecting the family. Building and protecting your family. Would you bow your heads with us as we open in prayer? Almighty God, we do thank you for today, for the opportunity that we have to gather all over the world via this technology to bring your word to your people. The entrance of your word gives light. And your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. Illuminate our lives and hearts today that we would be the people you've called us to be and live for you. May this word reach millions all over who would receive the word, act on it, and be improved. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Every Christmas, we sing the song, There's No Place Like Home for the Holiday. And I'm sure when we, we sing that song, it's true because a happy, healthy home is one of the best places to be. But I'm sure you can appreciate that a home where there is no love and no joy. Wow. It's one of the worst places to be. It's the most miserable place to be. And no one wants to be there. So how do we get a home and a family where there is joy, where there is love, and it's a pleasure to be in that place? How do we do it? Well, we want to look at that today in the scripture. Our key verse for today is taken from Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. And if you would open your Bibles with me, I want you to get there and mark it out. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. And that verse says, By faith, nor being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is of faith. The scripture says that Noah, realizing that a flood was coming, by faith, you know what this brother did? The Bible says he saved his house by preparing an ark. We, this church, is located in Central Trinidad. And those of us in Central Trinidad know very well the dangers of flood. Wow. If the flood don't kill you, 
It can rob you of all that you own. And things that you have worked a lifetime to achieve can disappear in just one afternoon of rain. And all your life's work can just disappear in that time. In Kelly Village, persons used to flood, and what they do in the homes, they build walls and embankments around their house and in their houses to protect them from floods. And these walls work well and they protect from normal floods. But in 2018, we had one of those once in a decade kind of flood. And the floods came in that day, but the walls that were built, the embankments, were just not enough to guard against those raging flood waters. And they destroyed a lot of houses and livelihoods. And you know, so it is in our lives. We have to build spiritual walls to protect our families. And the walls that you build, the size of wall, will determine the kind of protection your family will have. These are serious times. Satan isn't playing anymore. And neither should you. These are serious times. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26 and 27, it says, this is the age that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Wow. These are serious times. These are serious times. The floods of life are coming. And in the times that which we live, the scripture says anything that can be shaken will be shaken. And these floods, we need sturdy spiritual walls to protect us. Walls to withstand the things that attack your morals, your stamina, even your faith. And these walls can destroy our lives and our families. And so we need to know how can we protect our families and build them to deal with these times that are before us. I want you to know that the Bible has an answer. You can protect and build your family. How do you do it? Firstly, the scripture says you need God to build your family. You need God to build your family. The scripture says in Psalms 127 and verse 1, unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. David who wrote this isn't talking about constructing a shelter. He's talking about establishing a family. In other words, David is saying if you want a home that will last, one that will survive, then you better go to the master builder. If your car engine is giving trouble and it's going through some kind of issue, do you call a baker and say, my car engine giving problems? No. If your car engine is giving problems, you don't call a plumber. You call someone who knows about that, who's acquainted with it. And so it is in your family, if your family is giving problems, you need to call the master builder. Call on God. It is God in Genesis who designed the family. He invented the family. He created it. And so if we are having a problem and we want to build it, he can fix it. Scripture says, unless the Lord builds the house, we build in vain. And so we need God to protect and to, to build our families. We also need God to protect our families. Same scripture, Psalms 127 says, unless 
the Lord watches over the city. They that watch do it in vain. And it clearly then, he is saying that God is the protector. What is a city? A city is a, a group of families that live together. And so what he's saying is the watchers means to God to look after, to protect. So David is saying here in scripture that God can help you protect your family. Not only do we need protection in our families from the, the bandits and the burglars who come to steal our possessions, but we need protection from the very fabric of our family. There is a war on against our families. All those of you who are hearing me, listen, there is a war on. The enemy is attacking families in an aggressive way. And there are a number of weapons that he used against the families. We have got to prepare. One of the weapons is alcohol. Families being destroyed. The bottle is a cold-blooded killer. It kills slowly and silently. Slow motion killer. And parents who are heavy drinkers, they produce children who are heavy drinkers. They've seen it, statistics have shown it repeatedly. So the alcohol is tearing apart our families. Adultery. There's only one sin in scripture that can break your marriage bond in the eyes of God. And that is adultery, the sin of adultery. And the devil is using that to damage families, to break, introducing men and women into the union of family to destroy them. Families are being destroyed. People with their families for years going out on one fling and destroying their families. The attitude of selfishness, this idea of me and what I want, what I want is the most important thing. Pride, selfishness, only self-seeking. It's destroying families. You know, families were made and designed by God to get us out of ourselves because the family is a unit and they all work together. When there is this insularity and this self-seekingness destroys the very fabric of, of, of the family. And so it is coming against the family. But today the scripture says God can protect your family. You need God to protect your family. You need God to provide for your family. How do you keep the family? We need God to provide. In that Psalms 127, the scripture says, In vain you rise up early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. But God grants sleep to those that he loves. Are you having difficulty sleeping when night comes? You're tossing and turning. You're worried. You're working day and night turning. Your blood into sweat and you're up and down. The scripture says that you're going to be doing it in vain because it is God who is the provider. And we know Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides for us in every situation. He is the provider. The story is told of this little old sister who had nothing to eat, no food. And she opened her cupboard one day and there was nothing left to eat. And the sister opened her window and she sat in her room and she cried out to God. She said, God, I have no food. I have nothing to eat in the house. And there were some little boys on the outside playing and they, they heard the lady. And they started to laugh. They said, oh, we will fix her today. And so they ran down the road. They checked each other's parents. They went all over and they gathered up a whole lot of food. And when they got back, the lady was still there praying, crying out to her God. And as she starts praying, they start taking the stuff and throwing it through the window one by one. 
and they pelt a bale of rice and they pelt some sugar and they start and when the stuff started coming the lady got up out of her knees and started rejoicing praising god she said whoa god you're good you're provided you're providing for me and the little boys when they heard it they started laughing they shouted out to her they said no 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 they said not god provided for you at all it is we who gave it to you that is not god and the lady looked out of her window and she said, God, I thank you for providing this food for me, even though you had the devil, the devil deliver it for me. And that's how God is. God will use anything and anyone to deliver to you because he is the provider. And whatever you do, the Bible says, you will spend all your time running up and down, working unless God builds and God provides then what you're doing, you're doing it in vain. We need God to raise our families. We need godly families. We need generations of godly people. The scripture says in Psalms 127, children are a heritage of the Lord. They are a reward of him. And so the scripture is saying that there is value in children. We're having some sentiments expressed in society that says children are expensive. Children are a burden. Children are, a, the Bible says children are a blessing. They are not a burden. The scripture says that they are a blessing. Children don't make you poor, but they make a poor man rich. And you know, as rich as you are, when you die, you can't take your riches with you wherever you go. But if you take care of your children, you can take all of your children with you to heaven. If you lead them to Jesus, they will all be with you in heaven. And so the scripture says there is value in children. If we want to raise a godly heritage, God is able to stand by our side. He is our strength. He is our provider. And God will see you raise up godly generations from one generation to a next generation to a next generation. The Bible says they will rise up and call you blessed. Your seed will be blessed. God is able, the scripture says, he will help you to raise a godly heritage. We give God praise and thanks. Unless the Lord builds, unless the Lord protects, unless the Lord provides, we will have nothing. And so today, we thank God for what he's able to do. But brethren, wherever you are, God is able to do it. But God does not simply do that just by waving a wand. He doesn't wave a wand and say, Wee, voila, it's all done. No. What God does is he places the tools in our hands and he says to us, here's what you need to do. You go to work. I'm going to bless that work that you do and cause it to produce more. In Matthew chapter 12, and verse 29, the scripture says, Can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then, hey, then he can plunder the house. The scripture says if you're going to the strong man's house, you got to tie him up first. Lock him down. Then you can go in the house and plunder and take what you want. A powerful word from us. The devil people, brethren, wherever you are, the devil cannot, the devil cannot destroy your home unless you give him the opportunity. You have to give him the opportunity. 
And so I'm calling today upon all of you Christians. You've got to lose this strong man. We need. Though how many of you have seen the movie Hulk? Whenever something aggressive happens, he little slim little banner shakes himself. And suddenly this mighty monster comes out and opens up. And I'm saying to you today, loose this strong man. There's a spiritual strong man inside of you. And unless and until you lose that strong man, the devil is going to reign havoc in your home. Havoc in your family. God says you've got to rise up. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 says, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over, hey, watch it, and over all the power of the enemy. Not some. You know what the Bible says? He says, I give you power over all the powers of the enemy. Woof! What a thing. And he says, and nothing. Wherever you are on Facebook, type that for me. Type nothing. Come on. Click type that word. Nothing. Come on. Nothing shall hurt me. Come on. Type it. The Bible says, nothing shall hurt me. That's the word of God. He says, God says, I have given to you the power. Come on. It's inside of you. God has given you spiritual authority in our lives. There's authority for our homes. Authority for our families. The enemy cannot come into your family unless the strong man gets tied up. What is the spiritual climate in your home? Are you allowing the enemy to tie you up? To tie up? Mothers and fathers, are you exercising your spiritual authority? How does the enemy come in and tie up some homes, tie up families? Brethren, all he needs is a little crack. All he needs is a little crack. There are so many families today experiencing problems and destruction. And the enemy needs just a little crack. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 27 says, Give no place to the devil. No place. Don't open your door to give him a foothold in your family. Don't open your door. Deal with things when they come up. Those are the cracks that open lives. Subtle compromises. Little things. You open and you allow the child to go to some fet down the road that you don't know about. And they're bringing in all kinds of stuff in your house. Come on. You're gone and you want to open your life playing lotto, trying chance. You say you trust in God who is able to provide. But you're going and you're doing all these games of chance. The past. Things that had happened to you in the past. The devil brings it up. Those doors to come to get you. If Satan can't come through the front door of your life he gonna come through a window he come through a track he comes through wherever he can are you on speaking terms with God are you so alert to God that he will show you God says he reveals things in Isaiah chapter 13 verse 21 it says and you sh and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying this is the way Walk you therefore in it. He says the child of God who walks in the spirit will be alerted by God when things are going on in your life. Come on. It doesn't happen by chance. As a child of God, he alerts you to what is going on. But when you neglect it, when you tend to be selfish and say, no, I think I know what I'm doing, that crack opens up. And you know who's paying the price? Your family. Your family starts to pay the price. It's time for the people of God, especially the men of God, to be loose. To be loose from those chains. Come on! Where you are? Stephen Morris, where you are? Shake yourself, people. Bring on the Hulk. The spiritual Hulk. It's time to let the strong man loose in your house. Come on. It's time. It's time to let the strong man loose. No enemy must come in your house. Come on. 
You need to walk around your house. It's time we start to pray. You start to go from room to room around the yard. You claim your territory for God. It's time to get into God's gym and build up yourself. The scripture says in Proverbs, a wise man is strong, but a man of knowledge is even stronger. It's gym time. It's time to get in the gym of God and let's rise up. Loose the strong man and it's time to use your keys. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19 it says, and I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Keys are to lock doors, to lock out certain things from coming in. Block them out. But keys are also to open doors and let the blessings of God come in. And you need to know which door to lock and which door to open. God has given us the keys, people. God says he has given us the keys. Use your keys. Use your keys. Take responsibility for your family. And rise up. Declare victory in your family. You need to protect your family with your very life. You need to set on the alarm. Open your keys and turn the alarm on. Say no to sin. No to destruction in your house. No to children falling apart. Ensure that there is spiritual relationships in your home. I'm saying to you fathers and mothers, and even though you're a single parent or you have both in the house, you have got the authority. Do not allow the enemy to destroy your family. It's the fundamental place. You have it. Let the strong man loose. Rise up in your house. The scripture says, Noah, realizing the flood was coming, he built an ark. The scripture says to save his family. What are you doing to save your family? Are you building an ark? What kind of ark are you building? Today we want to pray because we don't want our families to fall apart. We don't want families in name. We want to rise up. We want to use our keys because we know that God is able. You are able to build and protect your family. For God has given to us the power. Whatsoever we bind shall be bound. And he says to us that he is there with us. And whatever we put our hands to do, he will build and he will bless. Today, if you're listening to me, and I don't know what state your family is in and what has been hampering you. I know we're living in treacherous times. And as the Bible says, anything that can be shaken will be shaken. And there are persons who have been married for years. And then suddenly one day they're no longer. The enemy comes in and he destroys lives, children, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters. Come on. Argument in the home, fighting and quarreling. It's time to put a stop and claim your families for the kingdom of God. If you are here today and you are facing this problem in your family, but you see you don't have the keys, you've got to have the keys to lock out Satan. You've got to have the inner spiritual strength to bring out the spiritual help. And if you don't have it today, now is a good time. You can get your keys today. Bow your heads with me and you say, Lord Jesus, pray with me. Dear God, I admit that I am a sinner. I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead 
to pay for my sins. Dear God, help my family. Clean this house and make it a home. And give me the strength. I commit my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. And to those of you who are Christians and you have the key, but you have not been using it, it's time to reclaim your ground. Come on. It's time to shake yourself. Do not accept what you see. God has given you authority and power. Bring your family together again. Come on. Rise up in faith. Except the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain. And so bow your heads with me again, those of you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I love my family. I need you to help my family. Dear God, I put you first in my life. And I ask you to help me build, protect, provide, and raise a godly family. Remove the enemy who wants to destroy our lives. We call forth your blessings. Build a hedge around our house. In Jesus' name, God, you touch every life and heart today that is open to you. You see them bow today wherever they are all over this place. There are brokenness in families. There is hurt. Persons not talking to their siblings. Husbands and wives living in the same house, living separate lives, separate bedrooms. They're not talking to each other. God, today this is not of you. And so we pray today in the name of Jesus, in the midst of this pandemic and all that is going on, that you will pour out your love. You will heal families. Bring them together. May they rise up in spiritual strength and call for the authority that you've given to them. Those cracks that have come in, those things in their life that has caused that hurt and separation. Mend the hurt. Heal the pain. Restore lives. And bring health, hope, and joy to our families. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you.